Great coffee, simple. You might have seen her on a podcast. You might have heard her on the radio, or maybe you're lucky enough to be in a club where she was DJ. For the Mac Cafe right along this morning, I'm going to be hanging out with Miss Cosmo, super excited, and I'm going to take her to a special place. I might even give her money to spend. I can't wait to see what she buys with that money. Come with me. <laughs> so take me back before Miss Cosmo the brand, mm. right? How did you decide on this is what I'm going to do? Because obviously I know that you used to be in corporate. Yes. Um, how did you leave corporate? Why did you leave corporate? How do you land up being the Miss Cosmo that we know? Um, geez, why did I leave corporate? Because there was less money. <laughs> yeah. Um, but outside of that, I just think it's also, um, it was always my passion. I yeah. knew yeah. from a young age that I wanted to get into entertainment. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Oh, so I see what you mean. So you know you when mean, you're yeah. in school, you're just like, I okay. Let I'm me doing just... it because I'm doing it, but I yes. want to go there. Yeah. I didn't really know what I wanted. I think at that point in time, I was just like riding the wave. Yeah. So yeah. I just figured, look, I'm good at finance. I'm good at numbers. Let me just go and study this thing and be in corporate and, you know, get a nine to five like everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the entertainment bug had always kind of been in me because as a child, I'd always be performing in front of the TV, reciting lyrics, things like that. Mm. So obviously getting into a corporate space, it was great. I mean, I still appreciate that time that I spent within um, a corporate, but I think the music was always going to fetch me somewhere, somehow. So I had started DJ lessons in my first year when I started working, actually. Oh, already? Yeah, because okay. that's when I had money to pay for the lessons <laughs> because of my first paycheck. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Wow, but that makes sense. Exactly. That makes sense, yeah. Um, so because I had the flexibility, also because I was a new, I was a student, I was a graduate. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they weren't really like Res a lot of responsibilities yeah. and there was no pressure. I was still learning on the job. So because I was still learning, I had a bit of leeway for me to kind of do other things. I see. So I picked up the hobby while I was still learning on the job. Obviously staying in the corporate space then started getting tricky. Because I had to work. Because now you're tired, but exactly. you're out until. So now I'm working seven days a week. Yo, I've done that. It's because hard. I'm working Monday to Friday in the office. And there's Friday expectations to... also yes. from this thing. Yes. Friday to Sunday, I'm in the groove. I'm mm, on radio. Mm, I'm mm, on the streets. Mm, mm. I'm, you know, I'm yeah. doing other things. Even during the week, sometimes when I have to do PR things like this, then it's like, Ish, okay, you have now to sneak I, off during I like... I'm going to a meeting. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to an interview. I'm coming back. <laughs> Look, I, I would call you a pioneer, um, per sense, especially in in like females and DJing, especially in a genre like hip hop in this country. You okay. know, what are some of the challenges that you've had just as a female? I mean, we've just come from Women's Month. Well, look, things are a little bit better now than what they were when I first started out. Yeah. Um, when I first started out, it was obviously difficult for people to take me seriously because there weren't that many female DJs. I mean, at the time when I started, DJ Zintle, Sindor, or maybe, and Lady Leah were like the most the prominent. The most prominent, yes. Yeah. And so you must remember, DJing is a boys club. Yes. Hip hop is also a boys, boys club. club. So I'm in a boys club within a boys club. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> Does she know what she's doing? Does she know what she's speaking about? Being on radio, getting that radio gig was difficult because people were like, okay, sharp, we love that she wants to DJ, but does she know anything about hip hop? I was just about to say, because everyone's like, ah, this one, she just came through. Exactly. But what does she know about the culture? I was just always a lover of the music. I mean, hip hop is one of those genres where you have to understand the history for you to, to entrench yourself into it. And it's not necessarily a must, but it's like, it's something that comes with it. Like you listen to the music and everyone debates it all the time mm, so you get mm. into that type of of rapport oh, when yeah. you're getting into when you're getting into hip-hop so it just made it easier for me that i was invested in what hip-hop was about so it was easier for you to pick easier. up everything else that came exactly. with it and i must say i i I'm, I'm only reflecting on it like in the past couple of years i think yeah. i only thought about it then okay but see maybe the guys were also giving me a lot of um a, a, a lot of stick for it because i was also getting the jobs that they wanted yes <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize that there was I also that you. jealousy element that was also coming in outside of them saying does she know what she's doing besides the fact that you're female and also you're cool 
you take a lot of some boxes that they can't take exactly. and they've been here longer but it just looks like your things are just getting better and better exactly yeah so it was tricky from that perspective the likes of dimples pear nerves milkshake they wanted uh, to see you succeed yeah they were there they were they had my back they supported me they always were there when i needed advice yeah um so i'm very thankful to them for always being there for people that i could kind of call on yeah um but yeah it was just hard like sometimes i'd play at a gig mm. and then i'd be rocking and people were like hey who's playing and now mind you i'm small so already i'm like you can't find me behind yes. the dj box and then they look and they see a wig and then they're like I know. You know, you what's know, happening no, there? Blind here, but who is she what's that like? yeah. so let's speak new single right in terms of features how did you decide on the features that I have on the song? I knew putting together Boiti and, and, and Moonchild was always going to be a fun song. I wanted people who are risk takers. I didn't see it. Moonchild is a risk taker. Boiti is a risk, risk taker. So you want people who don't care what people have to say. You want people to do what they think yes. is right. Yeah. And that's why we have such a fun song. Even the video is a little bit risque. But mm, I didn't care mm, because mm. I was like, you know what? I chose these people for a reason. Let them twerk if they want to twerk. Let them Let say them. what they want to say. Let them tell our That's what we're about. And I wanted it to be fun. Yeah. And yeah. I got fun out of the two people that I chose. Uh, and, 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 and speak about the chemistry because um, I've... Yo, I've met Moonchild on a personal space and she's... How do you describe her? She's, she's just different, she's you know? She's out of the box. She's out of the box. You yes. don't know what you're getting. Yes. You don't know the reaction. You don't, yeah. What was it like? And and then when I see Boiti, I don't know Boiti that well, but I see Boiti as reserved, maybe? She's not. Really? But that's a th that's what I... You know, and I, and I say this often because... I know a lot of people had reservations about Boiti when she got into music. And I was one of those people where I sat there and I was like, okay, I don't know what's happening, but let's watch, you know? So obviously with the first thing, I was like, okay, sharp. I was like, Boiti's got no work now. She's just jumping into music, no. typical. And but, then I thought the song was actually quite hot when she dropped it. But the that's first, the thing, yeah. and that's what I loved. And that's why I was also like, I need to have her on the song because I love the fact that she proved everybody wrong. Including, Consistently. Including me. Anyway, we're here, okay? Yes. Uh, we've got money. Yes. Okay. So we're going to be buying gifts for people that mean a lot to us. Yeah. Okay. So let's go inside. So the mission was that we made you are supposed to share money and then we didn't share money so I've got nothing, right? I didn't know that. You didn't communicate. <laughs> You're listen, a bad communicator. Listen, I saw you leaving with the money. I'm like, you know what? Let me let her take it. It's fine, <laughs> right? So you've got the money yes. and obviously you had to buy something that is special to someone yes. that is special to you. Yes. Um, what did you buy and why that and who is it for? I bought a beautiful neck necklace. It's, um, really nice. it's a Zulu beaded necklace, black yeah. and white. Mm. I bought it for a friend of mine who's also uh, my manager. Oh, okay. um, I specifically bought black because it's a favorite color. Okay. Very boring, but whatever. Yeah. Um, but also because she's been a very uh, important part of my life, very instrumental with. I don't know, bringing me into like a new side of myself. She's introduced me to new things as well, which I really appreciate. That's so cool. I think this kind of speaks to our relationship, how we kind of come together beatedly.